This episode is going to be for three types of people. One, you just had a spiritual awakening. Two, there is something that you keep working on in your life that keeps coming up and you're like, oh, I thought I worked on this. And three, you're someone who is maybe a self-development junkie and you want to learn all the things about further improving yourself. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. Good for grounding. I'm recording already. <laughs> Perfect. We entered the time portal, baby, where it just yeah. time is illusory. It doesn't exist. Welcome to Openly Spoken, the podcast to help you show up, speak out, and be seen. Here you'll get to eavesdrop on connected women's conversations about self-love, confidence, healing, relationships, creativity, and more. I'm your host, Celia Antonio, and I am your guide to getting you grounded into your body, feeling your full spectrum of emotion, and expanding your fullest self-expression. I also pop in here from time to time with solo episodes where I give you tips, tricks, and resources like meditations, visualizations, and all the things to get you grounded, to get you to feel, to get you to alchemize, and to get you to expand and express yourself fully. I'm so grateful that you're here, and I invite you to now put your hands on your heart, take a deep breath, set a tone for how you want to be as you show up for this podcast, take what resonates in this podcast, leave out what doesn't resonate, and take some time to reflect and to contemplate. And if there's anything in the podcast you want to chat about, you can always reach out to me on Instagram at self Express Babe. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's get started. Hello, welcome to Openly Spoken. If it's your first time here, hi, my name is Celia. I'm so grateful that you landed on this episode, whether you are listening to the audio or whether you're watching this video on YouTube. So this episode is going to be for three types of people. One, you just had a spiritual awakening. Two, there is something that you keep working on in your life that keeps coming up and you're like, oh, I thought I worked on this. And three, you're someone who is maybe a self-development junkie and you want to learn all the things about further improving yourself. And today we are going to be talking about the journey of liberation or the, I guess it would make more sense to call it like the upward spiral of personal development or the upward spiral of transformation, the upward spiral of liberation and slash or transformation. I really like the word liberation because um, I like the idea of what empowerment is supposed to stand for, but I don't like the word empowerment because if you look it up in the dictionary, which let's look it up together. If you look it up in the dictionary, it says authority or power given to someone to do something. And I don't believe you need anyone to give you power. You don't need a coach to give you power. You don't need a therapist to give you power. You don't need a mentor to give you power. If you're looking for someone to give you power, you're looking outside of yourself when really the power is already in you. So that's why I don't like to use the word empowerment. And I like to use the word liberation instead. When you're liberated, you're self-expressed, you're able to connect with aligned people, you have aligned relationships in your life, you have self-love, and just so many things. Okay, before I go off on that tangent, we are going to be talking about the upward spiral of transformation or the upward spiral of liberation. And it is a journey. The reason why I want to bring in that it's a spiral is that it's a journey that keeps repeating, but it is different every time the same thing comes up because when you are working on something for example if you are working on your relationship with other women and you want to find let's say you're a woman who wants to have deeper female friendships you might start working on it and heal some things and meet women that are aligned with you and then over the years maybe like a year later something will come up about it and a year after that, something else will come up on it and you continue to work on it, but it continuously comes up and you continuously deepen within that same realm. But it's not that every time the thing comes up that you're starting from scratch because you've already done this work before, if that makes sense. I hope that that makes sense. 
Okay, so this journey of liberation or this upward spiral, this is something I wanted to talk about because I wish that this was something that I knew when I was younger and that I knew when I had my first spiritual awakening is that once you have a spiritual awakening, they'll happen so many times. They'll happen again and again and again. And I actually had a uh, Instagram live conversation about this sometime last year um, that I will link somewhere over here in the video or down below in the show notes where we talked about spiritual awakenings. I talked about my first spiritual awakening and I talked about the recent awakening that I was on at that time. And yeah, I feel like once you open up to a spiritual awakening and allow yourself to experience that, you are then on this path where ahead of you is just constant transformation and shift. And not to say that that means that who you are right now is something that needs to be fixed. It's nothing like that because you're already worthy of love right now. You're already worthy of aligned relationships, whether that's friendships or romantic relationships or work relationships or any any type of relating with other humans. You're already worthy of that. And as you continue to do the work, all of those realms of your life are only going to get better and you're only going to experience more bliss and more joy. So that's why I wanted to talk about this today. And I do have some notes here where I kind of like laid out a whole step process where it has six phases of this little spiral. Okay, so let's get into the first one. The first phase is you meet a personal edge. So you come to this place where you are uncomfortable, where you are right on the edge of something that you know you want to shift, but it's terrifying, right? And change is not easy. And this is why you have to come to that personal edge. If you're staying in your comfort zone, there is no liberation, there's no expansion, there's no next awakening happening if you're just staying in your comfort zone. Whatever scares you, whatever terrifies you, your liberation and your awakening and your transformation lies just on the other side of that. And I think that's like a really huge cosmic joke about being human because a lot of us love to kind of run away or ignore something that we're afraid of. If there's something that brings fear in us, we're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And if you do that, then that becomes a thing for years in your whole life of this is that one thing that I'm terrified of and that I'm never going to touch. But if you allow yourself to go into that realm, whatever the thing is that you're scared of, like, for example, for me, one of the big things that I used to be terrified of is public speaking, even speaking like this on a podcast or on YouTube, like 10 years ago, I would not, not have been able to do it. But because I went towards that fear, so much more happened than just dissolving the fear of public speaking. Our fears like seem so big and they seem so concentrated in this one thing. But if you go after it, not only will you get over that fear, there will also be all these other little like blessings of the universe. Like, for example, going after my fear opened up a whole new realm of relationships because the way that I went about it is I joined Toastmasters, which Toastmasters is an amazing resource if you are someone that wants to uh, deepen your public speaking skills and deepen your leadership skills. And I'm pretty sure they have Toastmasters groups all over the world. It's nonprofit, so it's very um, accessible to join. So I will leave a link below in the show notes for you to check that out for yourself to see if there's any uh, groups that meet either virtually or in person in your area. So that's the first phase is meeting a personal edge. I need some water. So that's the first phage. 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 That sounds like a type of cheese. <laughs> phage. <laughs> so that is the first phase of this journey of liberation or journey of transformation or this upward spiral of transformation, of awakening. I know I'm saying all these different 
titles for what I'm talking about, but they all seem relevant to me and I can't seem to choose just one. And what's going to help you in this first phase of meeting this personal edge is having a clear desire of what you want. You don't necessarily have to know how you're going to get there, but you have to have the desire and you have to want it badly. Otherwise, you're not going to be motivated. And also what will help is having a reason why you want this desire. So it's not it's not only that you want to public speak or you want to learn how to give speeches with ease. It's also the reason why, like how I, I want to public speak so that I feel empowered and powerful or so that I can serve people, so that I can help people with the wisdom that I have, things like that. So that that's just an example. Okay, so let's move on to the second phase. You're going along this journey. You meet a personal edge. The next thing that's going to happen, you have your reason why, you have your desire. Next thing that's going to happen is resistance will come up. Resistance will come up. And this is where a lot of people, I think, just stop. They just stop. They decide, oh, I'm not going to do the thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to work with the coach. I'm not going to go to therapy. I'm not going to uh, do that fitness program, or I'm not going to give the speech. I'm not going to go to the networking event. I'm not like, I'm just trying to think of as many things as possible that I myself have also been afraid of. And that I've heard clients tell me that they're just like, eh, I'm not going to do that. That sounds scary. So by this time you've already like decided that you want something and when you start acting on the thing that you want on that desire you're doing something different you're stepping into unknown territory so this is the reason why resistance might come up and also if you're someone that is like very spiritual like myself and is always looking for kind of synchronicities or signs sometimes we can misread the resistance as like oh Maybe this means that I'm not meant to do this. When really the resistance, if you really like sit with it, something that really helps is if you really sit with it and feel for what sensations you feel in your body, minus the thoughts, because our, our minds lie to us. If you sit and really sit with what sensations come up with your body and breathe into your body and ground into your body, you might notice that the same sensations bubble up whether you're scared or excited. And then you might start to maybe shift your perspective or your mindset to react differently when you start to feel this kind of resistance coming up and, and maybe you start saying out loud, I'm very excited, right? And this isn't to spiritually bypass how you feel. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to admit that you're scared. but in order to come to a place of like transformation and personal development and consistently growing and every year on your birthday, looking back at the year before and being like, wow, I grew so much. You're going to have to learn how to move forward while you still have fear within you or while you're still feeling excitement that you're thinking is fear. Right. And this is, it's kind of like working out. If you went to the gym and you were doing, let's say, bicep curls and you're lifting like one pound weights and it's very comfortable, you're not really going to grow muscles, right? But if you're lifting 10 pound weights and you're doing more reps and by the end of your last rep, you're like, oh, you're like having a hard time trying to lift it, your muscles are going to grow. It's the same concept with this journey of liberation with this upward spiral. So, in this phase with resistance coming up, what's really going to help is that piece of grounding and dropping into your body and reminding yourself that you are safe, reminding yourself that you are supported in this universe, reminding yourself that you have this desire that you want so bad and simply because you want it is a reason that you deserve it, right? So if you can really like sit and ground and hold yourself and hold space for how you feel, then you get to move through those feelings. And another really good thing for that is um, with the piece of like moving through emotions that might come up or resistance that might come up is an embodiment practice. 
And I have so many embodiment practices that I've done with clients in the past. So I'm going to pick one of those and have that as like a little freebie in the show notes down below or in the caption below if you're watching on YouTube. So you can move through that. And um, maybe I'll even record a brand new one that's specific to resistance. I'm pretty sure I have one somewhere in my content library. Okay, so the next phase. I hate to break it to you, but this is like a little bit of bad news. The next part is chaos. Chaos and shadow. The reason why the chaos and shadow comes up is because at this point, the old you is dying. The things that you thought to be true about yourself and thought to be true about the world are starting to fall off. And that is terrifying for your ego. It is completely terrifying. And this is a phase where you'll hear a lot of people talking about like ego death or dark night of the soul. It's necessary to go through this stuff. And I think that's why there's another piece of our culture where we could um, be a little bit more open and welcoming to quote negative emotions because these emotions and these kind of like hard things that we would experience are necessary to go through to have some sort of growth, to have some sort of transformation, to move towards the things that you want in life. Because all of us, we, when we're first born, we don't have any type of say in what kind of life we are living. We don't have any say in the types of beliefs our parents or caretakers have, but we take those on. We don't have any say in what kind of environment we live in, but it affects us. It affects our body. We don't have any say in any part of our life that when we get, when we become, when we get into this age where we finally have more freedom and more autonomy, it's inevitable that there are going to be things that we learned in childhood that don't match with our desires of like how we want our life to be. And that's not to say that our parents are terrible people. Every single parent does the best that they can. It's just to say that it's a necessary part of like this, this is doing the work. This is what doing the work is, is being willing to be uncomfortable and move through your chaos and shadow. So shadow is all these aspects of you that have been in the dark that you didn't really know you were carrying with you start to come up and start to come up. And this can be a very uh, helpful phase to start working with a coach, start working with a mentor, start working with a um, therapist, start working with maybe like a support group, um, maybe group therapy, or maybe you get a group together of people that are working on the same goal as you. Something that really helped me in the beginning of my business was meeting with other business owners online virtually because it was 2020, everything was locked. Um, everything was locked down, was meeting with other business owners virtually and coming together to talk about our fears, to talk about what we're moving through. And that's actually how this podcast got started. If you scroll all the way back to like the first episodes, those are more of the topics that we talk about. Uh, I don't talk really about business anymore. Um, but if you are someone that just started your business and you want to talk to you want to talk to, you want to listen to conversations with people who are like newbies within business, talking about the messy middle behind the scenes stuff, go ahead and go to those first episodes because that's what this podcast was when it first started. And yeah, it's been cool to see how we've like organically evolved to talk about self-love and spirituality and self-development and all of the things that I'm just obsessed with. Okay. So in this phase three of chaos and shadow, things are starting to get a little more intense. And this is again, where people who maybe made it through the first phase are like, eh, I'm out. I don't want it that bad. And this is why in the very first phase, it's so important to get that desire of what you want. Plus the reason why, because that reason why ends up being this kind of like anchor and it like grounds you into earth. And then in the phase two, when you're grounding every time resistance comes up, it makes those roots that you've grounded into earth strong. 
And then when shadow comes up, shadow is, uh, in case you've never heard of what shadow is, your shadow, like your shadow self, is a part of you that you've maybe rejected or that you don't allow yourself to be. Shadow can also be like uh, beliefs, limiting beliefs that come up that you didn't really know that you had. So an example of a rejected self is let's say you don't allow yourself to be silly. Let's say you're very silly when you're at home, but when you're out in public or out with your friends or out with, you know, maybe you also make YouTube videos, you don't allow yourself to be silly. When you see other people being silly, it might trigger you. And it's because there's this rejected part of you that you're not allowing yourself to be. And so a really good thing for shadow work is to love all parts of you love yourself when you feel sad love yourself when you feel mad love yourself when you feel angry love yourself also when you feel gratitude happy and bliss but those parts are a little bit more easy to love so the sides that are the sides of you and the aspects of you and the facets of you that are a little harder to love if you just be in love to those parts of you you could do that with a meditation you could do that through an embodiment practice, through dance. You can do that through making space for certain like hobbies that really nourish uh, your inner child. And yeah, so chaos and shadow is phase three. And what's really going to help in this phase, like I already said, was getting support or doing an embodiment practice. So again, I'm going to be linking an embodiment practice in the show notes or in the caption below. Okay, now we are at phase four. Phase four, by the time you get to phase four, you have already worked through some shadow things. So when you work through shadow things, like for example, in an embodiment practice, let's say you go into an embodiment practice with fear. And in an embodiment practice, you're using movement, you're using breath, you're using sound. And let's say you're in this practice with fear. You play maybe like, two to three songs with fear and by the end of the third song you notice something different you notice like oh wow i have been trying to keep myself safe this is a side of me that's trying to keep myself safe because it used to work in the past and then you have compassion for that side of you and you decide all right it's time to let this part of me go and this gives you a new perspective on your circumstance it gives you a new perspective on yourself it deepens your self-love for sure so then by the time you are in this phase four you get to reflect on what you've learned you get to pause you get to look back this is a really like important phase to ask yourself questions to sit and journal and one of my favorite things to do is like to be my own coach in my journal and what you would do when you journal is ask yourself open-ended questions within the journal. This might have been something that I've talked about in my previous episode about um, different styles of journaling. There was one that was, I think, called self-coaching journaling. And you'd basically ask yourself questions about the situation and make sure that these questions are open-ended. So they're going to start with like, how would it feel to blah? Or how does it feel now that I have done blah. So like something that isn't something that you would answer with a yes or no, something that you would sit with and really have a think about, right? And in this phase of phase four, insights, new insights, new perspectives will come out because you're taking the time to pause. And this is also a phase that I feel like a lot of people, including myself, will like to skip through because we've been so conditioned to just be in this hustle culture and even within self-development, it's like this constant stuff that I have to work on for myself. So really taking the time to pause and reflect is so, so, so helpful because you can realize all the growth that you've done, which can be so helpful for your self-worth is stopping and pausing and looking back. Sometimes we forget to reflect back. And it can also be very helpful to Maybe look at your desires again. Maybe your desires have changed. Maybe you need to change your reason why. Maybe there's something that needs to be shifted and be tweaked in order to um, 
create a more aligned path moving forward for yourself, whatever that means for you. And one of the things that I would really recommend of when to take a time, when to take time to pause and reflect, no matter where you are in your journey, is to really take the um, take the winter and like maybe late late uh, autumn in the year. I know right now we're in spring, but if you have this in mind now, it can maybe like help you plan out the year if you're someone that likes to like plan way ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because that used to be me and I'm like working on dismantling that and letting go of that. I still love to plan, but it's not as like rigid and controlled anymore. But a great time to rest and pause and reflect is late autumn and winter time. Take that time to hibernate. Take that time to reflect on your year. Take that time to really ground back into your body. And don't get caught up in this hustle culture of having to do New Year's resolutions on January 1st. Like that is not, in my opinion, it's not an ideal uh, time to make uh, new goals. Uh, it doesn't work for me. I used to do it all the time. And that used to be something that I really like. I've been someone that makes goals since I was a teenager. But ever since I've let go of like it not being on January 1st and it being more of in the springtime or like right before winter ends, that for me seems more uh, nourishing. And it is more nourishing for me. And my kind of like thought process on that is like in nature, the late winter and like early spring is when things are starting to sprout and come up. Where, whereas in the wintertime, that's when like the bears are hibernating and everything is a little more quiet, uh, depending on where you live, like you, you don't hear any birds, everything is quiet and everything is resting. Okay, so that is phase four. I feel like I went on on a huge tangent there, uh, but it still has to do with reflection. So phase four was reflection, and now you are in phase five. Okay, so by the time you've gotten to phase five, you have met a personal edge, but you've continued to move forward. You've uh, experienced that resistance because you've moved forward, and then it was chaos and shadow, but you grounded yourself. You got the support that you needed, whether that is from yourself, whether that's from the from a book or whether that's from a group or a one-on-one -on -one mentor or coach. And then from there, you move through some things and then you took the time to pause and reflect. And now phase five is where you meet your inner sovereign, your inner power, and your inner worth because you've made it through something very difficult. You've made it through, like if you're someone that just went through a spiritual awakening, you've made it through like letting go of things that you thought to be true about the world and that is scary and that is hard and if that's you take a moment right now to maybe get up and do a little celebration dance <laughs> because that that's something to be celebrated that you went through that you you did so well moving through the first four phases and you're in a space where you can start to recognize like, oh, something is different about the way I can show up in friendships. Something is different about the way I can show up in public speaking. Something is different about the way I can show up for my art. Something is different in the way that I manage my time and something is different in the way that I love myself and fill my own cup by the time you are at this phase five this is these are the types of things that are coming up and yeah it's you you end up being here because you took the necessary action steps like you didn't just come up with a desire and come up with the reason why and then meet the resistance and then stopped you actually like did things there's this really delicate balance between doing things and then also the phase that we talked about before of pausing and reflecting, of resting, of not being so caught up in the hustle culture. So yeah. And then in phase six, 
the this is the final phase but there's something in the end of this that i want to touch on in phase six this like new sense of power and worth and this new like kind of sovereignty you're starting to feel becomes integrated and by integrated i mean it becomes your new normal and when it becomes your new normal sometimes this is then where we can stop doing the things that really helped us you know we stop doing the meditating we stop doing the breath work we stop going to the gym we stop going to therapy because we're like, I'm fixed, I'm done. Like everything is good, everything is fine. And while your level of support and your kind of like practices that you do to help yourself definitely will change throughout your life through different chapters, this is not like, if you let go of the things that really helped you when you're doing well and only lean on them when you're doing badly, I wish I had a different word for that, but if you're like not doing so great, then the practice that you do can only go so far. If you really stick to meditating every day and you do the meditation when you already feel good, you're gonna feel even better. But if you only do a meditation when you feel depressed, for example, you'll go from depressed to feeling like, okay, and then you'll, you'll just be in that okay phase. But this episode is about liberating yourself. This is about awakening. This is about transformation. And that takes a level of devotion. It takes devotion. But again, there's that balance of taking the action and taking the time to also rest and reflect. And this is why I prefer the word devotion rather than dedication. Because I think within our society of just hustle culture, again, to mention that word again, within our hustle culture, if we use the word dedication, it's like, a, am going to hit the gym every day for an hour, right? And if you are especially like i'm just i'm speaking from both my experience as someone in a feminine body and a female body and with my experience of working with clients that are also women our bodies and this could be a this could be a subject for another episode but our bodies have seasons and our bodies don't have the same levels of energy every week so exercising for an hour every day in the name of dedication would actually be harmful to us. But if you are devoted, then instead your devotion can be, I'm going to make sure I give my body movement every day. And there are so many different types of movement. Same thing with meditation, same thing with yoga, same thing with journaling, same thing with like there's so many different ways to do something. And if you are devoted to it from a space of honoring your body, you can show up for that thing, show up for your liberation um, every day with the sense of like, I'm going to do what is best for me in this moment where I honor myself and I also move towards my desire. And sometimes that thing could be resting right sometimes you need sometimes you need rest sometimes if you if like one of your things is trying to like gain strength at the gym and you're devoted to moving every day maybe one day you go to the gym for 10 minutes maybe one day you just stay home and stretch and you still got some movement in something where you are devoted so this is like the distinction of dedication slash devotion. And honestly, it's like from my perspective, so you can think about it differently. I just want to invite into the conversation of like a different way to look at things that is different from this hustle culture conditioning that we've had. So now, once you are in this liberation phase and this kind of new sense of power, this new sense of self-worth, this new sense of self-love and sovereignty, is normal 
and you get to meet a new personal edge. <laughs> and you start the whole thing over again. And this, I think, is the beauty of when you um, experience a spiritual awakening or when you decide to go down the path of self-development is that there's always more places that you can grow. And again, it's not that, like this can easily be taken the wrong way of like, oh, I'll, I'm always having something to fix so I'm never worthy and like just constantly being in this little hamster wheel of going to all these seminars and going to all these courses. And if that's really what you want and you really do feel nourished in that, do that. And like, that also might be in a specific phase in your life and it, that might be the phase you're in. And a few years from now, like that might not resonate anymore. But it's more of coming to this realization of like, there's always more about the universe to uncover. There's always new terrain to discover about yourself. And from a lot of people that I've talked to and myself included, who have kind of like already been on this upward spiral path of transformation before the whole world went on lockdown, these people were never bored. They didn't have like, and I don't mean to shame anyone that got bored, like that's totally fine. Um, but I'm just giving like an example of like how powerful this can be to have you using your time in a way that can really get you to live the life that you live a life that you love, honestly. So something I didn't really touch on with this upward spiral is like how the same kind of topics will keep coming up. So for me, once uh, there was this episode that I released at the end of last year, where I shared about my sexual awakening. And this is definitely something I've been on this upward spiral journey of liberation on with all of these steps and it's been over and over and over again but whenever i get to phase one where i'm meeting an edge i'm not it's not the same phase one that it was last year or two years ago it's a constant deepening within the same topic of my life and when you go through something when you go through the work once the reason why the upward spiral is so liberating is because although the same topics come up, you're not the same person when the thing comes up again, because you've taken the time and space to do whatever work it is. And that helps you show up more frequent, more um, with more power, with more self-love, with more nourishment and resourcing within you so i hope all of that makes sense and i would love to talk about these these uh six phases again and apply them specifically to the topic of um an episode i shared last year with the uh, sexual awakening and sexual healing work because this is something i'm still working on and i'm currently in a sex love and relationship coaching certification program with a place called Vita run by Leila Martin and it's just been so amazing and this work is like it can be very triggering work to share and scary to share because it's often like um what's that word it's often censored and it's often like deemed as like inappropriate to talk about but as I've deepened in this work I've seen how it's such an innate part of being human and I just, I can't keep it to myself and it's really going to help all of you who are here listening or watching on YouTube, whether you work with me in the future or not, because it's like the deepest layer you can get of self-love is working with sexuality within yourself before you're with a partner. And um, I think especially for women, that is a hard topic. And that's like something that needs to be, it needs a light shown on it. Because in like, I don't know about you, but in culture, 
like in school growing up and even in movies, like it was very uh, common and normal to talk about so like for men and boys to talk about self-pleasure but like I never growing up heard any girls talking about it but it was like normal for for the boys for the men to, to talk about that and um yeah it's really powerful when a woman can be in charge of her own pleasure and now we are like completely talking about a different topic of what this episode started so I will continue this conversation in a future solo episode thank you so much for tuning in again there's going to be a um a link for the embodiment uh practice in the show notes or the caption below and also if what I just talked about with the sexual healing is something where you're like oh yes I want to know more I'm curious this is work that I want to work on you can check out my course, Heart Magic. It's a breast massage course. And I have, as of recently, set some of the videos as like a free preview. So there's going to be a link somewhere down below and there'll be an option to click pre free preview. I almost said pre-free view. <laughs> so you can get the free preview and you can um, peep in on some of the content so that you can like know if it's something that you want to deep dive into before you purchase it. So that link will be in the show notes below. As always, thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate you giving the time and the space for these conversations. And I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.